so now we will directly go to the study design so whenever we talk about the study design we basically talk about two types of study design one is the qualitative study and second one is the quantitative study right so first one is the qualitative study and second one is the quantitative study sometimes you might have noticed that nowadays now the studies are going on by mixing the two studies simultaneously so that type of study is known as the mixed method study clear so two types of study one the qualitative one the quantitative and next one is the combining two studies simultaneously it is the mixed method study now regarding the qualitative methods you see when qualitative approaches are required these are required for in depth understanding in the following situations when we are interested to measure the attitude values motivations aspirations or concerns or belief regarding one particular thing in those circumstances we basically prefer to have a qualitative method so when qualitative approach when the problems are ill defined so it is not defined specifically when time and or data are in short supply this is another circumstances where we go for the qualitative approach and very early stages of research research when not much is known in favor of the topic and whether it may be difficult to or inappropriate to use more quantitative methods so these are the different situations when we prefer to have qualitative approaches in the research there are basically four major types of qualitative research one is the phenomenology second one is the ethnography third one is the grounded theory and fourth one is the case study so what is phenomenology phenomenology means a particular phenomenon of interest or event that is being observed and the interview is done from the participants so the study participants are asked regarding what do you think about this thing so in that way the actual phenomena what is going on that we are interested to capture that is the phenomenology so in a study so provider perspective on contraceptive service delivery so in in one of the situation it might be like this thing some hiv patients those who are coming to have the hiv services and also they are going to have the contraceptive usage so the providers who are giving providing these services and we are interviewing them to have their perspective regarding the contraceptive service delivery second type of study is the ethnography ethnography means in the patient's actual setup the patients are observed and the patients are interviewed so this is basically the ethnography so as a researcher we are going to the place where the phenomenon is going on and we are seeing right live and at the same time we are interviewing the patients so this is basically the study of ethnography next is the grounded theory some some theories that are being emerged that are being come out and last but not the least is the case study so say for example one new initiative it has been taken place after the new initiative what are the what are the what are the um, what are the perspective and what are the comments from the participants and the providers that is being that is being seen from the case study now you see i have given some examples a qualitative study exploring male cancer patients experience with percutaneous nephrostomy this is one of the phenomenology study you see accurate understanding and clear description of some phenomenon that has been interviewed from the patients those who underwent percutaneous nephrostomy <coughs> is it clear so this is one of the example of the phenomenology so the patient those who are suffering from the uh, cancer patients those who underwent percutaneous nephrostomy and they have been interviewed to have the understanding and clear description of certain phenomenon next is the you see community participation in health research and ethnography from the rural switzerland ashish sir i said sir 
So, you see the scientific description of individual human societies that is being carried out, right? So, in the, in the area where they are living, so this is an example of the ethnographic studies. Next is the grounded theory. You see the example, judging residents performance, a qualitative study using grounded theory, right? Here the intention is the new theories are generated from the collected data through interview, right? So, we are judging their residents, their performance. So, with a grounded theory to develop adequate theoretical concept about a particular topic. Right, so this is another example. Next is see, this is an example of a case study. So, one new initiative, it has been taken place and we describing a single unit such as a person, an organization or institution holistically in an integrated approach. So, this is an example of a case study. So, these are four different types of qualitative approaches in the research, right? Now, what are the basic methods I have told you in phenomenology because the participants, they are being interviewed. So, individual interviews, one is to one interviews. Second one, we, we gather some of the participants, same minded, same socioeconomic background and we do one interview. This type of interview is known as the focus group discussion. Next is the, as a researcher, we directly see what is being going on. That is known as the direct observation. And last one is the participant observation. So these are the different basic methods by means of which we carry out, that we collect the data for the qualitative study designs. Clear? What are the characteristics of the qualitative approaches? You see the small focus samples small focus samples because we have to carry out one is to one interview that is known as the in-depth interview and again we collect 6 to 12 participants simultaneously and we carry out one interview that interview is known as the focus group discussion and the data and you see here there is least attention to the sample size. In quantitative study design we will discuss so many issues are there and so many assumptions are there. Right. So, by means of which we determine the sample size that has to be done in the quality, quantitative research. But here, there is least attention to the sample size. We go for the purposive sampling and we carry out the interview. How long we carry out the interview? It is said that the up to data saturation points. What does it mean data saturation point? That means when the same answer is being repeated after a certain period of time, then we, we think that yes, we have got the information and now it is being repeated. Now we should, should stop the interview. So that technique is known as the data saturation principle. Usually 10 to 12, 20 individuals, depending upon the heterogeneity interviewed, that is being decided. So focus group, we, we interview at a time 6 to 12 individuals or participants they are being seated in a circular fashion facing each other and the moderator, he initiates one question and one participant is asked, what is your perception? Next, you, you tell me. You tell me. In that way, everybody is invited to participate in the lecture and again, their, their interaction is also being noted. Right? So, it is being seen that whether each and every participant, they are contributing or not. So, if someone has become very much dominant, that is not desirable. So, we have to stop. Again, we have to encourage the other people, those who are not coming up with their, with their, with their perception as well. So, this is focus group discussion. Basically, the beneficiaries, the clients, they, for them, these focus group discussions are carried out. Next, another one is the in-depth interviews are going on. So, when there are less than participants, so one is to one interviews carried out. Recently, our director general, sir, they have ordered us to do one survey and he wants the report by the end of the January. So, what is being said, probably it is it was said from the ministry, why precautionary dose of COVID-19, the uptake is not so good, unlike the previous first or two doses. So, now we have been told, now we have identified two districts in the state of West Bengal, the district which is having highest number of precautionary dose and, and another district which is having low, low, low number of precautionary dose. And from the highest, highest, highest district, we, have, we will identify two PHCs. 
one PHC with highest coverage and one PHC with low coverage. And in the PHC, we will we'll interview the doctors, medical officers, ANM workers and the ARSA workers. This is basically IDI, in-depth interview. And the community residents in that PHC, they will also be interviewed simultaneously. That is for the focus group discussion. Understood? So another one, last one is the key informant interviews. That is also from the service provider or the policy maker. So please remember, if I go to PHC and if I interview the medical officer and the ANM workers or the health workers, that is basically the key informant interview, not the IDI. And if I interview the patients or service, those who are taking the services, that is the beneficiaries, they are basically the in-depth interviews. And also one is to one. And again, if are we are interested to do the same thing, patients or service user, but at a time with six to 12 people, then it is becoming the focus group discussion. Is this clear? So these are the three terminologies we have to remember. Focus group discussion and IDI. This is IDI. This is both for the beneficiaries. And this is KII. That is from the provider's perspective. Those who are providing the services. And the first two, those who are receiving the services. Is this clear? So this is all about the qualitative study design. Now this is the basic list of the quantitative methods. You see, basically there are two types of methods. One is the observational studies and second one is the experimental studies. Can anybody tell me what is the difference between the two studies? In observational studies, the researcher is basically the spectator. He is thus noting down what is going on in the nature. And actually in, on that basis, he groups the different groups and then he undertakes the analysis. But in case of experimental studies, he actively manipulates either intervenes or withdraws something and then he is interested to see the outcome. So this is basically the experimental studies. So this is the basic difference. So in descriptive observational studies, the investigators allow nature to take its own course. So investigator does not intervene. But in case of the experimental studies, you see active attempt is made to change the disease determinant or progress of the disease. Is this clear? Now observational studies, they are divided into two types. One is the descriptive studies and second one is the analytical studies. In the very beginning, I have told you already. So in the descriptive studies, we are basically interested to describe the disease occurrence in a population in terms of time, place and person. But in case of analytical studies, we are going beyond that. We are interested to see, I told you, you mentioned about the aggravating factors, the risk factors. Now we are interested to see which one is having an effect in causation of the disease or in the occurrence of the disease. This is basically seen in case of the analytical studies. So analyze relationship between health status and the variables. There are four types of analytical studies, ecological studies, cross-sectional studies, case control studies and the cohort studies. We will discuss a little bit of all these studies. In descriptive studies, I have told you earlier, <coughs> right? Accordingly, we see the number and percentages. If you are interested to see the person distribution, if you see so many people were affected, we are interested to see the mean age group. She has said earlier, person distribution. So in that way, we might be interested to see the mean and standard deviation. If the data is not distributed normally, then we might be interested to see the median age and the interquartile range as well. Who is this person? Yes. Name? Very good. Yes. Dr. Lee Wenli Young. He, he is the first whistleblower of the COVID-19. He, he was an ophthalmologist and he was getting so many patients and he was basically a glaucoma specialist, right? So he was treating so many patients and that she, he first reported that yes, in my locality, I'm getting so many unusual cases of pneumonia and fever and they are just like the uh, swine flu type. And he posted in Facebook account also. They don't have Facebook, they are Facebook account in Chinese. He used to post regularly and then he was summoned by the Chinese authority and he was scolded by them. And then they told him, you delete your whatever you have written in the public forum and you say that I have done one mistake 
and I take the apology. And he was forced to write that thing. But later on, again, she saw another patient, he saw another patient and infected and ultimately he died. So his name is Dr. Lee Wen Liang. So you see that is the descriptive type of disease. He was basically telling, yes, in my locality, at that particular period of time, during the early December of 2019, just think, why it is COVID-19? Because it originated in the 2019. First case, probably it is in 28 December or 30 December in China. But he reported from the first week of December. But again, he was told, please be quiet. Right. So this is the thing. So, so now whenever we write the disease, I have told you the different designs. But now when we write down a paper or article, we might write in a different format. So one format is the case report. Say for example, in my practice, I have seen a case or say for example, some cases, what is less than 10. So I'm reporting the unusual presentation, unusual symptoms, unusual occurrence and unusual recovery after the surgery. So new vascular glaucoma. This is basically a case report. Either a single case is reported or less than 10 cases are reported. This is basically comes under the case report. You see, this is one of the example of the case report. Rheumatic mineralization of aortic valve and anterior mitral leaflet, a case report. A single case or or how many cases? Less than 10. Either one case or less than 10 cases. What is case series? Say for example, I have identified so many cases having a similar features. So this is basically a case series. Basically, more than 10 cases. If one or less than 10, we report it as a case report. If more than 10, it is reported as a case series. Now see, this is an example of a case series. A case series of gastrointestinal tuberculosis in renal transplant patients. In case series, if we are having around 20 or 30 cases, within the two groups, we can do some type of statistical analysis as well. Clear? Next, say for example, is the third type of study. This is the cross-sectional study. What is this? It depends upon my objective. Say for example, if I am interested to see what is the occurrence or prevalence of hypertension in this class. So basically I have to define the based on the objective, I have to define the variables. What are the variables I will take? You know, two types of variables are there. One is known as the dependent variable and one other is known as the independent variable. What is dependent variable? In this example, blood pressure is the dependent variable because blood pressure is dependent upon so many factors. And the so many factors, they are collectively known as independent variables, also known as prediction variables or criterion variables. And the dependent variable, since it is the outcome of all the independent factors, so this dependent variable is also known as the outcome variable or also known as the response variable as well. Clear? So we have to, you have to very much specify about this thing. What characteristics will be studied? What outcome variable will be studied? And what predictor variable will be studied as well? And when defining the variable, this is very important. You have to give the operational definition as well. Say for example, say for example, in a study of uh, occurrence of acute myocardial infarction, then, then hypertension will become an independent variable. Now I'm telling you one question, whether always, always hypertension will be dependent variable. What do you think? In the in the in today's class at the very beginning what i gave you the example of hypertension this is basically the de de dependent variable now my question to you whether in all situation hypertension will remain as dependent variable as always no very good it depends upon my objective now if i am interested to do one study regarding outcome of the myocardial infarction heart attack or the stroke then the hypertension, diabetes will come as the independent variable. So it depends upon my objectives. Isn't it? Now in the second class, second study, I am interested to see regarding the, uh, the occurrence of heart attack. Now then I am taking hypertension as an independent variable. Then you have to write down in, the, in your proposal or research topic, whom would you consider as hypertensive? Now can you tell me, whom would you consider as hypertensive? 
in a study whom you will consider as hypertensive in the study kisko kisko bolenge ha unka hypertension hai jiska blood pressure 140 or more and or dbp 90 or more now say for example one of your friend have he has measured my blood pressure my blood pressure is 120 by 80 now you have seen that he is discussing something with me and now he has treated me as a hypertensive how so maybe on medication exactly very good so operational definition is very very important so you have to write down in your operational definition the person who is having sbp 140 or more and or dbp 90 or more or or any person is who is having on anti hypertensive medicine they will be considered as hypertension that has to be specified in in all the study designed this operational definition is very very important say for example say for example i am doing one study on the smokers so now who are my study population those who are smoking currently now from here i have seen yes one person is smoking there now i am telling you yes yes see i have got one person usko pakad lo usko le lete usko puch lete to usko pucha kitne din se kha rahe ho oh, sir uh, just one week back now would you consider him as a current smoker again again you have to see the definition what definition they they are telling according to who they tell as current smoker as who have been smoking at the present time and who has smoked more than 100 cigarettes in the lifetime so that person will be excluded so this operational definition is very very important so you have to specify beforehand whom would you consider as the disease positive whom would you consider as not the disease positive whom would you consider as exposure positive whom would you not consider as an exposure positive is this clear so that has to be very much specified that i have written that operational definition it has to be specified if you if you say that yes i am interested to see how many of them are overweight then you have to specify we will calculate body mass index and those who are having bmi 25 or more they will be considered as overweight so in that way you have to specify hypertension 140 or more or 90 or more or any person who is taking a anti hypertensive that is the drug they will be considered as hypertensive so in a cross sectional study basically at a time we generate the data and the data you see we categorize the entire study subjects into four groups what are the four groups exposed have disease exposed do not have the disease not exposed have disease not exposed do not have the disease say for example in this class i am interested to measure the level of anxiety whether anxiety present or not and or hypertension present or not say for example i am telling anxiety is the independent variable and hypertension is the dependent variable so on that basis in this class i will get some participants who have anxiety and have hypertension who is having anxiety do not have hypertension who is having not anxiety have hypertension no anxiety so in that way we can group the we can categorize the entire class into four different groups so accordingly we can do the analysis like this thing we can do the analysis like this thing sometimes we have seen some students they ask me or the teachers this is the basic table you see disease yes no exposure yes no now one of the common question i used to face when i was in a medical college sir which one to do column percentage or row percentage many students they used to ask so what percentage i will do whether i will do the column percentage or i will do the row percentage in the cross sectional study what is your your opinion very good absolutely correct absolutely so it depends upon my objective it depends upon my objective i cannot say like this okay you are doing cross sectional okay you do column you are doing this one you do row no the answer is not like this thing the answer is what she has absolutely correct so that is the answer so if i am interested to see out of the diseased how many of them are exposed then i have to do the column percentage if i want to see out of exposed how many of them are diseased then i have to go for the row percentage 
am i clear you think about twice again so it can be either column wise you see on the b or it may be on the row wise as in shown in the figure a if in the figure figure a i will do the row percentage when i am interested to see out of exposed a plus b is the total exposed population out of exposed how many of them they became diseased then i will go for the row percentage but if my objective is to ascertain out of the diseased people who are diseased a plus c how many of them are exposed then i have to go for the column percentage is this clear so this is the basic basic understanding of carrying out the analysis in the cross sectional study so both approach is correct you will see later on approach a it is basically a cohort study approach and approach b it is basically the case control study approach we will we will, we will discuss later on so in case cross sectional study we calculate the prevalence how can we calculate the prevalence we have discussed in the morning total number of current cases that is comprising of both old cases as well as the new cases divided by total number of population studied multiplied by 100 then it is percentage if multiplied by 1000 then prevalence per 1000 population as well so whatever you wish you can report like this thing and then you have to make one cross table like this thing you see hypertensive and normotensive and i have done the column percentage because i was interested to see out of hypertensive how many of them they were exposed to alcohol intake so that was my my intention and i have found that 70 per 70.3 percent of the diseased they were alcoholic vis-a-vis 21.5 percent of the non-diseased they were alcoholic then i wanted to see whether this difference whether this difference is by chance or statistically significant since we are dealing with the qualitative data counted data we calculated the uncorrected pearson's chi square statistics and we saw that the p value is less than 0.05 then we we commented on that yes alcohol intake has a positive role in causing hypertension among the study population am i correct is this okay so this is the basic output of our cross sectional study so whatever you 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 wish you can do as a column wise or you can do as a row wise and the second one you have to calculate the uncorrected or pearson's pearson's or whatever may be the situation of chi square and you have to see the p value as well this is how we do the cross sectional study cross sectional study what are the advantages very cheap and quick studies data available current records or statistics it can measure the prevalence the problem is this it only studies only with the survivors those who have died early we can't take them most of the situation and the problem is this one what is that temporal weakness say for example i'm telling you in the class i have measured all of your blood pressure today and i have measured all of your anxiety status today by using a one scale now i'm telling you you see say for example I, I, i've seen her her records she is hypertensive and she is also having anxiety now i'm telling her dekho tumara anxiety hai isiliye tumka hypertension bhi hai now she is telling me sir uh, do you know the story now kya story now she is telling sir previously i was all right but 5 months back i saw my blood pressure is there hypertension and then i became anxious so what you are telling <laughs> anxiety is the cause of hypertension in my case no you are wrong actually hypertension is the cause of anxiety in my case but i am measuring your anxiety your hypertension on 3rd january 2023 how can you say which one preceded earlier that is the problem that is the known as the temporal weakness is this clear since i am measuring the exposure say for anxiety or the outcome say for example blood pressure hypertension at the same point of time 
I cannot conclusively say which one preceded earlier. Now she is telling, sir, I became hypertensive, then I, be, I became anxious. So what you are telling the story, that is absolutely wrong. So this is the, this is the, this is the only drawback of the cross-sectional study, otherwise it is very, very good. So temporal, that cannot be said, because we are measuring at a single day, as on 3rd January. I don't know the history. She knows the history. That is why she is telling like this thing. Is this clear? Good. So cross-sectional study is over. Now you see some question is there. In early 1940s, one surgeon in New Orleans observed that virtually all the patients on whom he was operating for lung cancer gave a history of cigarette smoking. So one surgeon he was operating the patients, those who are having lung cancer. And when he was taking history, he saw almost all of them, they are giving history of cigarette smoking. What he concluded? Nothing wrong in, wrong in it. Quite obvious. Now you see another case study. An Australian ophthalmologist he observed number of infants and young children, infant means those who are less than one year of age, and young children in his practice who presented with an unusual form of cataract. He noted that these children had been utero, inside mother's womb, at that time when another infectious disease that is rubella, also known as German measles, rubella outbreak was there. So, so many, he is an ophthalmologist, he operated so many infants and young children and whenever he interviewed their mothers, all of the mothers, they have said, yes, I was pregnant at the time when rubella outbreak was going on. So, what he hypothesized? Nothing wrong in it. So, if you want to draw one meaningful conclusion from these studies. What you have to do? What you have to do? This is my hypothesis. Hypothesis is a statement which is to be proved or disproved by certain types of studies or analysis. Then how to do this type of study? Analytical study is obvious. Now how to start? So what, what they proposed? To determine the significance of such observations in a group of cases, a comparison or control group is needed. Without control group, we cannot comment like this thing. What is said? Without such comparison group, these observations would only constitute a case series. Now I am showing one slide, you will enjoy all the slides. So I have taken the, this is the, this is my study design whether smoking causes lung cancer or not. Look at the screen. Who are they? The patient is suffering from lung carcinoma. Another patient, he is also suffering from lung carcinoma. Another patient, he is also suffering from lung carcinoma. So what we have done, So what we have done, we have taken all lung carcinoma cases together and we are calling it as a disease positive that is the cases. Is this clear? Yes. Up to this slide, is this clear to all of you? So I have taken some lung cancer patients and all the lung cancer patients, they are taken into a single group and we are calling it as lung carcinoma positive. So the disease positive. Now simultaneously. I have also taken some patients. You see, this patient is having hypertension, but it is confirmed that he is not suffering from lung carcinoma. I have taken another patient, you see, that lady also is not, not suffering from lung carcinoma. Another patient, he is also not suffering from lung carcinoma. So I have placed all these patients in another group. So this group is cases, that means those who are having the disease positive, 
the disease what is in our research question and this group they are don't have the disease in the question so they are comprising of the control group so one group is the case and this group is the control this study is basically the case control study now you see what i am doing we will ask each of them are you a smoker if smoker yes from how long you have been smoking like this thing now if i see at the end in this group smoking was more and in this group smoking was less compared to this group then we can certainly say yes smoking might be causing lung cancer in this situation is it clear to all of you so this is basically the basic structure of the case control study is it clear now so many issues are there so many issues are there suppose i have chosen cases and controls in such a way i have included so many young patients in my control group because my intention is to show smoking causes lung cancer now i have shown you yes you see smoking smoking is 50% here and smoking is 20% in this group now i am telling you just see smoking is 50% versus 20% so smoking is causing lung cancer now she is telling sir you show me your data you know which type of data she is telling sir i want to see the age distribution of the study participants now i am telling you the mean age of this group mean age of this group is 62 years now she is telling sir what is the mean age of this group mean age of this group is 25 years now she is laughing sir how can you say like this thing your two groups are not comparable to each other ye itna young hai ye to smoking karne ka mauka hi nahi mila you might argue like this thing and i know that with increase in age cancer risk increases old patient like you and young patients like me <laughs> so so you see the issues are there isn't it then how can you say then i am in false position so uh, then i am doing a sorry sorry okay then she is telling she has come okay sir okay i have understood regarding the age now you tell me sir what is the gender distribution of this group gender distribution of this group i am telling gender distribution it is 50 50 50% male 50% female sir here 20% male 80% female again females are less smoker less genetically susceptible to lung cancer sir again how can you conclude so you see so many issues have come up so whenever you are doing this type of studies you have to take all these things into your mind so that we will not miss at the end right so 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 many things are there 